All right, for those of you who are new to searching for and reading scientific papers, here's a quick introduction for you, but it really just takes practice, 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 and it will get easier, I promise. All right, so first off, how do you find papers? Let's say I'm interested in C. elegans and serratia, okay, and I want to find papers that have researched those. So you use search engines just like you do a Google search. You put in your keywords, and then you hit search, and you get results back. Scientists generally use, or biologists generally use, three different search engines, um, depending on their preferences. So one is PubMed. This is very popular, especially among molecular biologists and anyone in the medical field. This is what they'll be using. All right, so I searched C. elegans serratia, and here I got 30 results back. And you can see the titles of the papers, the authors, some information about the journal, etc. And then I could click on any of these to get to the abstract of the paper. All right, another search engine I want to tell you about is Web of Science, and this is really what is used by across broad scientific disciplines and for biologists, generally uh, ecological biologists will tend to use Web of Science rather than PubMed, but it's a similar thing, right? You type in your keywords, you get your results, you can click on your results to see which ones you're interested in. The third will probably be the most intuitive, it's Google Scholar. So it's essentially a Google search that's, um, that only looks for scholarly articles. All right, so we'll do our search. And again, we're getting titles of papers, information about the authors and journals, etc. So however, right, you get lots and lots of results. I'm not going to read the 4,000 results I found. So it's important to be able to sift through these and figure out which papers you're interested enough in to actually take the time to go and read. All right, so there's a few ways to do this. Generally, you look at the title, um, and then Google will actually show you text from within the article rather than just the abstract. But if you click on it, you can get to the full paper or the abstract easily. Um, you can also see how many other papers cited it, which gives you a sense for how important in the scientific community this paper was. Um, although, you know, if it's a new article, it hasn't had a chance to be cited by others yet. Okay, so to decide what you're going to read, check out the title. If it's, you know, scroll through the titles, I find one that looks interesting to me. I'll click on it, and then I read the abstract, okay? The abstract is generally about a paragraph long, and it summarizes the paper and their key findings. Use that to figure out if it is worth your time to go and read the full paper. All right, I also want to point out that there are two types of papers that you'll find in these searches, review articles and primary articles. Okay, primary articles are where scientists publish new data, they publish new results. Review articles are where an expert in a field writes a summary of the current knowledge in that field. All right, so reading review articles will be pretty easy for you. It's much like reading a textbook, okay? It's meant to explain things to the reader, so they do a pretty good job of that, and they're um, easy to read, although often highly technical, right? Um, but reading primary articles can be a little bit more challenging for students. So, and I want to stress, here's a primary article. Do not read a primary article from beginning to end. That's not the most effective way to read it. All right, the best way I have found to read an article is to read the title, read the abstract. All right, that abstract is going to ground me. I know what major um, field the work is in. I know the question that they went after. I know basically the experiments that they did to go after it, and I know their key findings. All right, so I now have a framework um, that I'm coming from to read the rest of the paper. All right, then for me, um, I'll read the introduction. Okay, and that can be really helpful. Introductions are also really helpful for you guys to find other references. So, right, if you want to you read a sentence in the introduction and that's something that you're interested in, something that you'd like to say in your own paper, um, you then can go find this reference, right, go to the reference section, look at this Thompson, these three papers in this case, um, and you can go and read those papers and then you'll be able to make a similar statement in your own paper, right? So intros are great places to find um, other references for you to look at. All right, don't be afraid, though, if there's a lot in the introduction that you don't understand. You don't have to understand every sentence as you're reading a scientific paper in order to understand the general findings. 
Okay, so it is okay to do some skimming. It is okay to read some things, not fully understand it, and move on. As long as you're understanding the general gist of things, it's okay to keep going. All right? So I'll read the introduction. I will then skip entirely materials and methods. The only reason I would want to read a method section would be if I want to do a similar experiment or if I'm dubious of their work or don't understand how they set up their experiments and I really want to have that level of understanding or confidence that they analyze their data properly, etc. Okay, so mostly I never read materials and methods when I'm looking at a paper. I'll then skip to results and again, um, you can sometimes skim results. So they often have these headings which tell you, all right, this part is going to be about host adaptation. Am I interested in that? If so, I'll read this section. As I'm reading, right, they will reference papers, figure one here. And so as I read this, I might then go and find figure one, look at it, come back, do the reading. So when I read results, I'm often going back and forth with the figures. The discussion or conclusion can be really helpful for you to read, but again, you don't have to read, you can do some skimming of it, right? They can sometimes be long and long-winded, depending on the scientist and their style. Uh, but they can be really helpful if you didn't quite understand what was happening in the results. Um, discussion is often where you can read and they'll restate their main findings in a less technical manner. So the discussion can sometimes be an easier place to actually um, read and understand what they did. Okay, I finally want to mention that just be aware that different scientific journals have different formats, all right? So there is not one scientific format that everybody follows. Um, generally, it's abstract intro methods, results, conclusions, but um, you'll find that different journals have their own styles. Sometimes they change up the sections a little bit, and sometimes, you know, some journals tend to have really long intros, some tend to be really short, etc. So um, just be aware that as you read different journals, there might be different formats that might look different from what we are asking you to do in your own papers, right? So when you write for us or when you write to publish something, you just have to be really careful in reading what exactly that journal or for us your assignment is asking for and follow that format.